so today we will talk about uh, nexus vdc so what do you mean by vdc uh, vdc is a virtual device context virtual device context it's just like uh, you have a big chassis right suppose and you have uh, line cards some line cards are there f2 line card is there or f3 line card is there and m1 line card is there right so there are 20 24 ports 21 four ports like and now this is a one chassis and now you want to create a virtual switch out of it the vdc is just like a context in asa we say as so what we do based on the uh, license plus supervisor we define the number of vdc so it it's all depend upon the number of i mean the supervisor engine the model of the supervisor engine whether it is a sup1 sup2 or sup2e and based on the license so by default if you have a one license so you can create a four vdc four vdc and for sup2e you can create a eight vdc out of four vdc one will be the default vdc which will be already there plus three will be non default vdc here one will be the default vdc default vdc is just like a vlan one i mean it will be always there so it is a super vdc we can say so from the default vdc only you can create an other logical switches so one is the default one plus seven non default vdc now so so it's all the number of vdc depends upon i mean i i will ex, i will explain it once more because there is a some concept of once admin vdc comes then the number changes so uh, well, when i'll go to that topic i'll i'll, I'll complete that so the num so the number of vdc depends upon the license and the supervisor right so let's suppose i have a supervisor engine 2 and i have a one license of so i can create a four vdc so let's so it will be in a same chassis so let's have a four vdc right now once you create a four vdc so let's compare it with the individual switch so what do you have in individual switch in this in this switch you have a ports right first thing you have a config file you have a cpu plus ram now the cpu and ram because it is a part of a same switch same chassis you are creating only virtual so the cpu and ram will be shared between uh, vdc admin vdc right sorry come again uh, it would be shared with uh, admin uh, vdc right to every vdc it will be shared okay okay but admin Now, vdc would be allocating uh, that cpu and ram to all the vdc right no 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 i am not talking about the admin vdc currently i am only talking about the default vdc and non default vdc okay so once you log in to this switch i mean nexus device you will be in a default vdc so by default once you log in to the either in a via cli or either via you know uh, 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 console right you will be a part of default vdc now from default vdc you created a so suppose so vdc id 1 will be always a default vdc uh, then you created vdc id 2 vdc id 3 and vdc id 4 so these are called as a non default vdc that you will create whereas the default vdc whose id is one is by default it's always there so because some vdc should be there then only you can log into this switch right now from the default vdc you created vdc 2 vdc 3 vdc 4 now let compare these vdc with the individual switch 
so the ram and cpu will be shared between all these vdc by default right now config file each vdc will have a separate configuration file so vdc 2 2 will have a separate config file vdc 3 will have a separate config file vdc 4 will have a separate config file and the all these config files will be present where in your in your boot flash memory that will be shared right now what's about the port the number of port you will be allocating right so let's suppose you have a f f3 module and m1 module and each have a 24 port 24 port so by default these all ports are a part of default vdc now from the default vdc you will allocate it so let's suppose from f3 module i allocated from port 1 to port 10 to this vdc in f3 module i allocated port 11 to port 20 to this vdc and in 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 vdc 4 m1 module i took the m1 module and i allocated port 1 to 20 now m1 port has four port left f3 port has four port left that will be a part of default vdc why because everything is is a part of default vdc and the, from the default vdc you will allocate some ports to your non default vdc so just like this one so some port will be here some port will be here right so your virtual switch will act as a individual switch so this contains a port this contains a configuration file it contains a cpu and ram which is already shared now how do you connect to hardware switches via cable here also if you want to connect to virtual device context i mean to virtual switch you have to connect it via physical cable it doesn't mean that they are a part of a same chassis they will communicate each other no treat vdc is just like a separate switch the only difference is that the separate switch will have a separate hardware it will have a separate port it will have a separate config file it will have a cpu and ram but in a vdc it will be a part of same chassis but it will be a logically divided into different different switches and the port will be allocated from the default vdc and the each vdc will have a different different its its separate configuration file so that you will have a if you have a different configuration file for each vdc then your configuration will not be mix and match so it will behave like a separate switch so this is all about some overview of a you know a vdc which i have gave now so can, you, can we access uh, the uh, non default vdc from the native one Native yes you, yes you can do that you can access the non default vdc from the default vdc via cli also you can access ssh or telnet from remote location to non default vdc also i mean i said it's behave like a individual switch treat the vdc is like a separate switch so jo any functionality which a separate switch you know uh support that will be supported whether it is ssh telnet routing protocol switching protocol anything everything will be supported by vdc suppose suppose the cable is not connected between the non default vdc then then also we can uh, access it from the default vdc right yes they, yeah. so from the default vdc there is no need to connect a cable because there is a you know there is a command we say uh, so let's suppose you went to the default vdc and then you you can say switch to okay switch to vdc name so it will be switches between you know chassis only right okay okay but from the ssh or telnet if you are somewhere else uh, your uh, your virtual switch uh, your nexus box is somewhere else in your data center and you are remotely you know uh, there so each vdc will have a management ip just like a uh, we have a separate management vlan in all our you know switches and routers right so and from that management ip you can just telnet it or ssh it you will be accessing remotely that would be defined in uh, the native vdc the primary one right uh, that the management management ip no it's not there i'll i'll come to that part how how the management is configured okay, okay. now what is the 
why the VDC came into the picture. So VDC came into the picture. Let's suppose you have a company or you have a, you know, a, a company where you have a production environment, you have a sales department, you have an engineering department. So you have a three switches. Right now, let's suppose two more department came or three more department came. Then again, you have to buy a separate Nexus boxes. Right. So in order to provide a Nexus core switching facility, VDC came to the picture so that in a single box, you can create a virtual switches allocated to the different different departments and based on your requirement if more uh, if more you know a uh, department comes just create vdc's and allocate it so this is how a vdc came into the picture now what do you mean what is the benefits of the vdc the cisco nxos software support vdc which partitions a single physical devices into a multiple logical devices first thing it can partition a single physical devices to multiple logical devices. Second, VDC maintains its own unique set of soft running software processes. It has its own configuration and can be managed by a separate administrator. So each VDC, I mean, each uh, switches have its own STP. Each switches will have own routing instances running on, right? The same like, you know, in the VDC also. Treat VDC as a separate switch. If you treat that, if you read this, you know, my statement, then you will understand what is the VDCs. VDC also virtualize the control plane such as RIB and the routing protocol. RIB VDC provides the following isolation, fault isolation. Fault isolations mean there is a two VDC. If there is any fault in, in one of the VDC, another will, will not be affected. Just like you have a connected two switches in two switches OSPF is hanged some here on this one. So your network connectivity will be destructive, but it doesn't mean that on another switch your OSPF will be hanged, right? So this is your fault isolation management isolations means each VDC will have its own management IP. You can access it hardware isolations means you have already allocated individual set of ports to individual set of VDC and no port will be shared between these two VDC. So you are, you are, you have done the hardware isolations also.